All right, guys, today I'm going to go over how to build some box patterns. I'm going to show you how to build an, a, a minor pentatonic box and a diatonic box. And then once you're ready to take on more boxes, you'll be able to build them yourself. When you build them yourself, you understand them and you memorize them and you learn them better, which makes you play them better. The boxes are used to keep you inside the key when you want to be in the key. That's really all they're for, is just to keep you away from the notes you don't want to be hitting. So it's important to learn the box and where the root notes are in the box that you are hitting. So in pentatonic land, it works like this. The first box we're going to be building is the E minor box 1. So we're going to use the key of E minor, which is the key of G major, and we're going to be using its pentatonic scale. Here's how I get the notes of the E minor pentatonic scale. I begin with the regular E minor scale of E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and I remove the second and the sixth letters. I'm left with E, G, A, B, D. That is why it is E, G, A, B, D. So you've seen that before, some of you. And now you know why those letters are there, because two letters get knocked out. <clears throat> it's the two letters that are sitting in spot number two, spot number six. It's for all 12 minor keys that way. That is how you find any minor pentatonic scale. You remove the second and six letters of the major of the minor scale. If you were building a major scale, you would remove the fourth and seventh letters, and they would be the same two letters, but beginning from the major root. So if you were in G major, and you had G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, if you remove four and seven, it'll be C and F sharp. You remove those, you'll still get E, G, A, B, D, but starting from the G. In the minor pentatonic scale, it begins on the E. So it's E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. We remove the second and the sixth, and we're left with E, G, A, B, D. Now, let's get started. We're looking for those letters, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. That is how that scale works. You find two letters on each string beginning from the first letter or in this case the first letter. If you begin from the second letter G, that would be considered pattern number two because it begins on the second letter of the scale. When you begin on the A, you will get pattern number three. This pattern number three, which would be begin on the A, would be A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B. So it's five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, four, seven, five, eight, Five, seven. We're following the letters of the scale, starting with the letter that we want to begin on. If you want to begin on the third letter, you're building the third pattern. E, G, A. You're building the third pattern. Five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, four, seven, five, eight, five, seven. Because that is where the notes lay. Now, if you look, <clears throat> I suggest that when you tab it out, you don't have to learn it again. You just figure it out one time. You highlight the root notes so you know where they are because that's where you're going to be resting when you create your licks is on those roots. So you write out a pattern one time, you figure it out once, you highlight the root notes, and now you have the pattern as a reference every single time you want to play it. Now the first pattern is really easy so you probably don't even have to do it with that one. But let's say you're building two, three, four, or five and you're new to the patterns. You're going to want to know where the root notes are. So I suggest building them in the key of A minor or E minor and learning where the roots are. This way, when you make your way around and you're a mature player, let's say, and you're playing in C sharp minor or D minor or B minor, and you're playing in a different key, you might be in G minor. You will still know where the roots are because you learned them in one of the easier keys like A minor or E minor. Now let's build a diatonic box. We're looking for three notes on a string. But we need to keep the pattern to five frets, and that's going to be challenging once we get to the higher strings, and I'll show you how we deal with that. So let's build a diatonic box. The most common one is the Aeolian pattern, which is the minor scale, your basic minor scale pattern. The basic minor scale pattern in the key of E minor follows the pattern of E minor, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. Now we're going to find three notes on every string. So we go to E, F sharp, G, 12, 14, 15. A, B, C is 12, 14, 15 again. Now it's D, E, F sharp is 12, 14, 16. G, A, B is 12, 14, 16. But we need to keep three notes on every string, so we're going to repeat the B again, B, C, and D, and then E, F sharp, G. So this pattern is going to be summarized as 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 15, 
12, 14, 16, 12, 14, 16, 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15. If we do not repeat this B note, what happens is when you come over here and play G, A, B, well, then if you went to C, D, E, your E would be in 17, and now your, your pattern is 12 to 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 frets. Your eyes cannot see 6 frets at once. It is a proven fact. You must keep the box to 5 frets and 3 notes on the strings. Because if you do not keep it to 3 notes on the string, you can't speed through the pattern very smoothly when you're going from 3 to 2 to back to 3. And you won't see anyone really do it like that if they're trying to get smooth flow. They would use it as two notes on the string if they weren't concerned about blasting through the strings quickly. But if you want to rifle through them smoothly up and down, you need three on every string so it's even. And so what we do is we take the B note from the G string right here, and we repeat it here because this is five frets. So we keep it one, two, three, four, five. This B repeated here allows us to keep five frets and still get three notes on this string, B, C, and D. Then we just follow it back with E, F sharp, G. This way you can just ba da da ba da da ba da da instead of trying to be like ba da da and all the way out to the E here and getting back. This sixth fret, if all these patterns were six frets wide, you would not see the shape of the pattern. It's too many frets at once to grab. The eyes can't follow it, so we keep it to five, and that's why we double up that extra note. And that is how you build a box. You find the notes on the strings following the notes, and that will dictate where the fingers go. These are the first two patterns, from, uh, minor uh, pentatonic and diatonic. So we su I suggest you be able to find those and build those patterns in different keys, being able to trace the notes of the different keys using the patterns. So you can do this now two different ways. You can either learn this pattern I just showed you and then apply it somewhere else, take it to the B note, figure out what's on these letters, what's on these fret numbers, figure out the letters that are there, and that will tell you what's in B minor. And then you can begin from any letter to build the rest of the patterns. So if you wanted to build the second pattern, you would build it from the second letter. There's the G. You would look, starting from the G, you would be looking for G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, and begin with two letters on every string until you got the pattern. And that is what it takes to build box patterns. Finding the letters on the strings, following the letters, and that will dictate where the fingers go. I hope this makes learning box patterns easy because again, let me show you that when you write out your diatonic pattern even, as I did here for you, you can see the E minor E Aeolian pattern and I highlighted the E notes so you know where they are. So when you're playing around in the box, you can get back to the root note and feel the resolution of your lick. It won't sound like a re it won't sound resolved unless you land on this root note. There are other notes you can land on but we want to start landing here so you can learn to establish a completed sound when you write a lick. I hope that makes the things easier to learn your boxes. You write them out, what you learn them once, you figure it out one time, you write it out, and then it's easy to remember because you can just look back at the work that you wrote out to memorize it. I hope this makes learning your boxes a little easier. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. I will have more videos coming out on the modes. This is just a generalized beginning of how to build your boxes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.